Good morning. Good to see each of you. As a few are still taking their seats, uh, if you're visiting with us, we want you to know that you're our honored guest. We're glad that you've come our way. We'd ask that you would take a visitor's card on the back of the pew in front of you. If you would fill that out, you can leave it on the seat or put it in one of the collection boxes in the back on your way out. We'd also ask that you hang around for a little bit. Give us a chance to get to know you, shake your hand, welcome you, um, and, and speak to you. We're glad that you're here. Uh, also want to remind you, uh, if you aren't aware, that uh, right after the Lord's Supper, we'll stand up and sing a song. If you have children um, that want to participate in children's Bible time, they can head off this way as we stand and sing that song. Um, then also, if you would, at this time, raise your hand if you didn't get the Lord's Supper. We miss anybody that didn't get it on the way in. Okay, great. I don't see anybody. Um, last week, we were challenged with the idea of, of stop and reflect and stop and praise. As I tried to do that uh, this week, and I hope that you did too, I, I noticed that, um, and this is going to sound familiar, some days are really bright and beautiful, some days are really stormy and cloudy, some days are overcast, and you know it's likely to rain, some days look really good, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a storm hits. That's, that's life isn't it? Um, it's funny though because as we walk in here, I just got asked how, how am I doing today a couple times and what is everybody's response? We're fine. We're great. Uh, but that's, that's not really the truth. Um, we're not immune from the storms of life. Uh, we never are. Um, but thank you God that we serve a father that never leaves our side whether it's raining and storming or it's bright and beautiful. Uh, no matter how hard it gets, we can read, Jesus told his disciples in, in John chapter 16, verse 33, hey guys, listen, here on this earth, you're going to have many trials, you're going to have many sorrows, but take heart because I've overcome the world. Doesn't matter where we're at, we know that he's already won. So I'm, I'm not Jesus, but I'm going to say to you this morning as we begin, no matter where you are, take heart because he's overcome the world. With that, let us worship. Good morning. We pray to God that we worship him today in spirit and truth. Let's sing.
Before we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer, we will sing, You are my all in all. Shall we go to our Father in prayer? Father, we come humbly before you this morning, thanking you for all of our many blessings. We realize that we live in a blessed country. We don't want to take any of these blessings for granted, knowing that all things come from you. We take this opportunity to thank you for the privilege of coming here this morning to worship you. And we thank you that we live in a country that we're able to do this. Be with the people in your Ukraine, Father. This is a tragic situation. We hope that you'll watch over these people and that this conflict will end soon. Thank you for all our many wonderful blessings, Father. And we take this opportunity all told us to pray for our young men and women that may be overseas in harm's way. Watch over them and bring them back safely to their homes. And Father, give us a better understanding of your word, not only for our own edification, but that we might present it to people that we associate with on a daily basis, that we might win many souls unto you. And be with us as we go back to our homes today. Watch over and guide us as we humbly pray in Christ's name. Amen. As we prepare to take the Lord's Supper tomorrow morning, we'll um, use this song to help us prepare our minds for taking the Lord's Supper. Thank you. 
started again this morning. If anybody has not received a uh, cup on Fruit of the Vine, if they'll raise their hand, we'll try to get that to them. Okay. Um, today our focus scripture is in Hebrews chapter 9, and it's verses 13 through 14, so I'm going to read that real quick. It says here that, For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh... How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Um, To elaborate a little further, when I first became a Christian 20-something years ago, Colin said, look, let's keep it simple. You stay in Mark, and uh, let's get Mark figured out before we move on to other uh, chapters. He was a wise man because he, he uh, knew I was a simple guy. So when you get into Hebrews, it's a, it's a, it's a little more detailed and it's a little more, can be a little more complicated. Um, Hebrews, we have to remember, is written to Christians who were Jews. And the Jews are trying to pull them back into the old ways. So if you think about those things before you read some of the, some of the specific scripture, you kind of understand what's going on here. Um, In the book of Hebrews, you know, specifically detailed reminder of why the new law of Jesus Christ is much superior to the old law. Uh, The old covenant was represented by priests and sacrifices of the temple where priests had to offer repeated sacrifices for sins. And those sacrifices came from the blood of animals. Christ offers a single perfect sacrifice. He was the perfect son of God and he knew that his death was our only hope. So as the church has done for thousands of years, let's remember his sacrifice. It is the blood of Jesus that came down one time for all sins, for all people, forever. It's not animals, it's about the Son of God. So let's remember that as we take of the bread. Father, we thank you so much for your plan of salvation. We are so thankful that your Son was so willing to come to this earth and to sacrifice his body and his blood for our sins. As we take of this bread, we remember his body and we remember that it walked amongst us. We also remember that we uh, betrayed him and we put him on that cross. Father, we take this bread, remember his body, and we ask that you please be with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
right, we'll play, pray for the fruit of the vine. Father, again, we remember the sacrifice of your son. We remember that it is uh, through his blood uh, that gives us uh, purification and that washes away our sins. Father, we are so thankful again that you had this plan from the beginning of time and that he um, was willing to see that plan through. And Father, as we take of this fruit of the vine, we remember that we are drinking that today in this blood, remembering his sacrifice, but we will do that again until he comes because it is our, your promise that he will come again and that we will drink this with him one day in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. set this time aside to uh, remind us of how fortunate we are and to uh, remind us of how lucky we are that we get to give back. <clears throat> we don't uh, pass out the plates any longer, but we do have two boxes at the back on your way out. If you would um, put your contribution in there, we would appreciate that. Um, I don't have a sp specific scripture to read today, just some thoughts that came to my head the last couple of days um, regarding this church and giving and, um, you know, there's so much that goes on in the world, and George referred to uh, this morning, you know, what's going on across the, across the world and um, Ukraine right now, and, you know, we are very, very fortunate, and I realize that. Um, I real, realize that not a lot of people have this kind of a building to worship in, and um, we take a lot of things for granted. Uh, one of the things that we don't want to take for granted, however, is the work that this church does and this, that this body does. Um, 
There's a list on the back of where the money goes and uh, contributions that are made to different um, preachers and evangelists across the across the world. But for me, you know, I, I give uh, locally to some nonprofits that are really dear to my heart. Um, I see things on TV that can uh, kind of gut wrench you a little bit, and I give to those. But I, I never want to not put this place first. Um, we are, for lack of a better word, um, you know, we, we don't give our W-2s at the end of the year to the elders and say, here's my 10%. Uh, we are not required to show check stubs, but we are on God's honor system. And um, we give, uh, he's asked us to give out of the goodness of our heart and um, not just what we put in the box today, but the time we give and the things that we do throughout the year, I think is what makes this church and this body something that's welcoming to people that may be new to the area or may be hearing the word for the first time and all those things that we do uh, to contribute um, helps us expand God's kingdom. So let's pray and uh, be thankful for the things that we have. Father, we are so, so very, very thankful for you and your son, but Father, we are so, we recognize how blessed we are. There's probably never been a nation of any other time, Father, that are as blessed as we are today. We know that we owe everything that is good in our lives to you and to him. And we give those things back in your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. Love divine, we invite you to stand while we sing this song. Love me, my God. give you a head start. Uh, I'm going to be going to uh, the book of Psalms chapter 51 in just a moment, but let me welcome you. Let me welcome anyone that's here for or traveling through here for the first time. Encourage you to come back and be with us. Got a lot of great things going on at this place to honor God and to glorify Him, and we hope that you would, if you uh, are going to be in the area, you make sure that you make it known to us that uh, by filling out one of those guest cards as uh, 
Jed had already told you about. This morning, uh, as I share with you some things, I let you know that I am teaching 1 Timothy. The very first chapter, Paul wrote some things to Timothy that really kind of hit me from the standpoint of uh, he wanted Timothy to make sure to share with that church in Ephesus as he began that ministry there. But I also know that uh, in getting to that in a moment, I also know that there are uh, an awful lot of things that we could gather from that. A lot of things that we could learn from what he wrote to that young preacher as he going to a church. But as I begin this morning, I want you to know that one of the problems we have, our tendencies as human beings, is the issue of not ever being able to forget the past. We seem to always want to go back to the same old things. Sometimes it gets in our mind, it reminds me of that, and it starts again a situation of our mind remembering the past. Whether you've been a Christian for a long time and obeyed the gospel, or whether you're one of those that uh, has not yet honored God by glorifying Him through your devotion and your obedience to Him. You know, the Apostle Paul told us, and we know that he wrote it in Philippians 3, 13, Paul had that struggle. Paul wanted us to know, and he spoke specifically about this very thing when he said, forgetting what is behind. What was in my past, I've got to put that out of my mind. But I want you to know this morning, not only is God trying to glorify you as we read through His Word, but also Satan is trying to hinder us. Satan's about putting in our minds and uh, hindering God's people from serving the Lord because He speaks and He holds the past over us. He likes us to go back and reflect on how we were. And you know, if you're here, not yet a Christian here today, you might be thinking in your mind, Wayne, what in the world are you talking about? Do you know who I am? I've gone too far. I've stepped over the line. There's no way, no way at all I can be freed of that guilt and that sin that I have in my mind and in my heart. And when I think about my past life and I consider things of God, I just, I just can't get past it. I just can't seem to get past it. I've done too much in my life to ever be forgiven. Well, let me assure you that God's Word gives us the strength that we need, the courage to press on to victory, and the freedom to look for and find God's grace through Jesus Christ. I ask you to turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 51. Looking in verse 1, I want to read for you the words of David, a man after God's own heart. He says in verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your love kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. My sin is always before me, David writes. 
Almost like David is saying, I can't get it out of my mind. I can't do away with it. There's nothing you can do for me. And you know, unfortunately, some of us that have obeyed the gospel find ourselves in that position. Because my sin is always before me. The person that has the hardest time with forgiveness is ourselves. We have the hardest time with forgiveness. Notice what he goes on to say, and I'm going to take you over to verse 9. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Everything I've done wrong, please, please block them out. God, please do that. And then look at verse 14. He goes on to say, Believe me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. I want you to remember that there was a lot of blood in David's life. But as he phrases that and he writes that psalm, shouldn't our words be exactly the same? Deliver me from the guilt of slash. Oops, whatever I've done wrong. Please deliver me from that. And that's what he goes on to say. Deliver me from that. Because I've done some terrible things and I'm asking you, God, to deliver me from it. Well, I'm just going to give you an idea of what we need to be about when a child of God, when somebody has obeyed the gospel and we, re we have received the Lord's forgiveness, just give you an idea of what we need to be about. Sadly, many of us will go back and reflect on that. You know, while we want to be free from that sin, from that guilt, from that whatever binds us, whatever Satan puts in our, li our life to make us remember. I just want you to know that we constantly need to leave that sinful way behind. So this morning, I want to just suggest that you get over your past. Get over your past. It'll do nothing but shackle you. It'll do nothing but bind you up in such a way that you will never be able to Leave those things that have bound you for a long period of time. But we need to be aware that a child of God, once we receive the forgiveness that God has given us through our obedience, many of us just can't seem to feel forgiven. We still have it in our mind. And yet, as I said in the beginning, if you're not a Christian... Perhaps you feel like I've stepped over the line. I can't be forgiven. You know, our sinful past continues to weigh us down. I'm not obeying because I'm not worthy. I don't think I can get over it. And then after being freed from the bondage of sin, some of us find our minds because we've been slowed down a little bit. And as I said, the shackles have put, been put on and I don't do the Lord's work as I should because I keep going back remembering my past. And so with that in mind and with that in the forefront, I want to share with you some things that we need to think about, need to understand if we have that struggle of getting over beyond our past. The first of that is I want you to be reminded that everyone has a past. You're not the only one. Everyone, Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody has a past. Everyone has a past. Every servant of God, in some way, at one time, there was a sinful practice in their life. When we read through the Word of God, I think about Abraham. I think about his situation. He ends up, we, we might today call him a liar because he ends up lying about something. And then as we think about some others, as we move through, you know, and begin to think about, for example, David, we already could see the horror in his heart about the way he had left and he, as he turns to God Almighty. And then 
Think about Solomon, his son, as Solomon begins to lead those people and he falls into the sin of idolatry. I mean, we could go on and on and on. We could talk about Rahab. We could talk about Moses. We could about talk about Moses obey, disobeying God. We could talk about Samson living a life of sexual immorality in the way that he is described and he lived. And then Peter himself, the n- number of times that he turned away and did not do what God, I mean, he failed on many times, but he denies the Lord three times. And then, of course, we are familiar with the Apostle Paul and how he, how he describes himself. It is amazing to me how he takes the time to write such a, a terrible thing about himself in uh, 1 Timothy, as I told you, uh, that we're studying 1 Timothy 1, verse 12, and I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And here we go. Although, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of the Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all the acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And here he goes with that famous line. Paul says, I am the chief sinner. And so we see that everyone has a past. And as we begin to think about how violent, I mean, I don't think anybody in this audience went into a Christian's home and pulled them out and tried to put them in prison. I don't think anybody ever did the things that Paul did. And then it says that he blasphemed God. And then it's just a terrible thing for us to think about. But everyone has a past. The second part of that is we need to get to a point where we trust in God's forgiveness. Listen, we got to put it behind us. we got to trust that God Almighty knew exactly what he was doing when he, that day of Pentecost He sent the words to those people, men and brethren, what must I do to be saved? What can I do to obtain salvation? It'll be important for me to have salvation. It will be important for me to have that. Instead of allowing the terrible things from his past to wear him down, Paul moves forward, as we've already read. He had faith that God could forgive and save him, even as bad as he was. Do we also believe, do you believe in the promises of God? Take a look at this. That day they hear that. Notice what it says. If I've obeyed the gospel, Acts 2.38 tells us if we have changed our way of living, and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. There's no reason for them to linger in my life if I'm a Christian. I need to forget them and move on. That's just one place we can read that. And then in that book of Acts, chapter 22 and verse 16, why are you waiting around? Why do we hesitate? Why do we do that? Get up, arise, be baptized, and get your sins washed away. Again, getting rid of your sins. And that's what the Word of God has told us, calling on the name of the Lord. And then in 1 John, you turn over there and read, and it kind of puts an identification mark on sin. But he's telling us in the Word of God, the Holy Spirit instructed, says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How is it still humped up in our mind, in our heart, 
if we've obeyed the gospel of Christ. He has cleansed us of that. He has taken that away by your repentance, by your baptism, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And then finally, this is a great thing to think about. Hebrews 10, 17. Their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. God, help me to be like that. Help me get in a position in my life so I will remember them no more either. I will not reflect back. I will not look at past disappointment or things that have challenged me spiritually. Thank you for that. Do we also believe in His, what He has told us to do? You know, we can't constantly beat ourselves up over forgiven sins. And sometimes that is a challenge for Christians, that we do beat ourselves up over that. But God, God wants us to leave the past in the past. Need to be through with it if I've obeyed the gospel. God has given, through the blood of Christ, the opportunity for all that to be left aside. Paul chose to leave some things in his past behind. You remember he goes through a list there in uh, the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. He goes through a list of things that he was, you know? And he talks about leaving those behind and he presses on. He also left behind the guilt of his sins in the past. While Paul mentions his past sins to teach lessons, he does not dwell on them. He keeps marching forward. And that's what you and I have got to do. It's Satan, the devil, that wants to keep us stuck in the past. It might be a high school reunion. It might be a Facebook post. And it might be just a, do you remember when? And that's Satan at work in our minds because we've been forgiven of those things, not to be reminded of them. He wants us to do nothing more, God Almighty, to experience freedom in Jesus Christ. And then I want to make the challenge to you now is that you move forward with Jesus Christ. That has got to be the fourth thing that we have to do as we think about perhaps the way we've lived. God wants us to move forward with Jesus. Paul learned this from his past failures. And he used them as a fuel to be inspired and to go out for the betterment of all those that would hear him preach and obey the gospel as he did those churches. You know, he was seeking to gain the prize of heaven. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14, I press on, Paul says. I press on toward that goal that's been promised me. I press on toward that for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And that's where he was headed. Instead of allowing our past sins to drag us back and put us in another position of having to come out, it constantly does that. We need to use the tools that we have had in those experiences to become more thankful, to become more faithful, and to be more spiritually mature. We can't ever lose sight of how bright our future is when we begin to run forward with those spiritual gifts that God has given us through His Son. Listen, all of us have that past. All of us got to have enough confidence to trust that we are forgiven regardless of what comes into our mind. But we need to leave it in the past and we need to pursue Jesus Christ. Can you do that today? Are you ready to respond to that gospel call? I don't know where you are in your life. As I said at the beginning, whether you're a Christian or not, there's nothing that you have done in your life that you can't be forgiven of by the blood of Christ. By coming to Him in obedience, repenting of the way you've lived, and saying, hey, I'm moving forward. I'm changing the way I've been living. I'm changing that way, and now I am going to follow the Word of God. I'm going to be obedient to that gospel call. 
And then if we've been a Christian for a long period of time and we've struggled with feeling the forgiveness that God has promised us and given us through our obedience and you need to get back on track and realize the power of all that God has done. we got a song of encouragement to encourage you to respond to that. As we stand together and sing, let us know how we can assist. housekeeping first. <laughs> Great job, Wayne. Thank you for that message. If you have not already got an announcement sheet, please pick one up before you leave tonight, today rather. Uh, I do have a few more announcements to add to that. First of all, on our sick list, good to see Harold Collins here today. He's out of the hospital. And uh, Jack Clark is also home from the hospital, as is Cindy Loftus. And so please keep these, all of these on your prayer list as well as the others that are listed in the uh, announcement sheet. Uh, so one special announcement, uh, the family asked for no visitors for Linda Norton. As most of you know, she's under hospice care. Uh, please keep her in your prayers and, and the uh, family as well in your prayers. Uh, there are flyers and postcards for VBS out on the table in the, in the lobby, so please uh, Take some, hand them out to your friends and neighbors and uh, so we can have a great VBS. Everything looks really, really good so far as they're preparing for VBS. There will be an, on, an annual congregational meeting on Sunday, April 24th during the evening service. So uh, please uh, come back for that, for that congregational meeting. And also uh, feed the preacher signups on the bulletin board uh, for the summer series. That is not very far away. It's coming awfully quickly. Just want to let you know that uh, we're still, still doing shepherd's chats. So if you've not been called to come in and talk with the elders, you will be. And uh, we've had a great response so far. And uh, uh, just enjoy just sitting down and talking. See how you're doing. So uh, please remember that. Small groups today after services. And this evening there will be a group here at 6 o'clock. So uh, take part in that small group. Uh, activity as well. And of course, uh, don't forget Wednesday evening Bible classes for all ages at 7 p.m., the Thursday morning adult Bible class at 10 a.m., and of course, uh, next Sunday, be back once again for worship. If you're one of our guests, we have a number of guests today. We're glad you're here.
Hope you can come back. If you're traveling, we wish you Godspeed. And if you're local folks, we'd love to sit around and talk with you some and invite you to be part of us. So uh, just great to have everybody go out and make it a good day. Tell them what Jesus has done for you. Richard. What a fellowship, what a Gracious Heavenly Father, humbly we bow before your throne. I ask you, Father, to forgive me of any sins in my life in these recent days, that you will forgive me so that my prayer will be heard. For my, my prayer is prepared from my heart, Father. And I speak to you, giving you thanks for the recovery of the many that we have prayed for that are back amongst us. I thank you, Father, for my brother who has delivered for us today a lesson very powerful, a lesson that each of us should take into consideration into our hearts and apply to our lives, that we forget the things behind us and move on to greater things ahead that you will provide. Even so, Father, we understand that there are great turmoil in this world, in your world, all over the world, not only in foreign lands and soils, but in our own neighborhoods, in our own houses, in our own homes. And there are greater concerns, Father, than just those that are struggling with health issues. And there are many among us that are doing just that. We ask that you'll be with them as only you can be as the great physician. Give them comfort and peace. Show your love to them in their hours of need. But Father, there are other things beyond medical things that concern us. There are issues in our lives that are concerning to us spiritually, mentally, psychologically, things that concern us, things that bother us deeply. Help us to dwell more on your word, on your love, and on your forgiveness than on the things that are going on around us. May we be faithful in the days ahead, Father, as, as we ask you this very moment in time to dismiss us in your grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.